Last week, I did my first hive inspection, and it was really cool. I was able to find the queen, see some developing larvae and eggs, and I removed some stray comb. Today, I want to talk about one of the most challenging aspects of beekeeping, and it's part of the reason why so many new beekeepers quit. I'm talking about pest management, specifically the Varroa destructor mite. You see, in the late 1980s, this pest was introduced into Florida, where it has since spread uncontrollably across the continent. This mite is specifically evolved to parasitize honeybees, but its original host, the Asian honeybee, evolved natural defenses to cope with the mite. Unfortunately, because the western honeybee did not evolve alongside the varroa mite, it lacks any kind of meaningful defense and is therefore very prone to infestation. When a varroa mite attacks a bee, it attaches itself to the bee's body and feeds on the host. In order to reproduce, the mite enters into a cell with a developing bee larva and lays eggs. Those eggs then hatch, and the newly hatched mites feed on the larva as well. However, this act of feeding, while bad for the bees, is only where the problem starts. Much like mosquitoes and humans, when a mite feeds on a bee, it can transfer dangerous viruses. So the more mites that are in a colony, the higher the virus load in that population, which is ultimately what causes the colony to collapse, not necessarily the mites themselves. If you only treat the mites when their numbers become too large, then you already have an elevated virus load. You're much better off if you can keep the mite numbers low all the time, but you don't want to just use chemical controls because A, you might accidentally make the mites resistant to the chemical, and B, you can't use chemicals at the same time that the bees are producing honey, or that honey will be contaminated and be considered unfit for human consumption. So on this channel, I'll be practicing integrated pest management, or IPM, which is a technique that, while not unique to beekeeping, is a highly effective measure. Essentially, IPM practices involve affecting environmental factors in order to better control the pest. In practice, it means that I'll be using a variety of techniques and tools, which in combination should help keep the mite levels low. Today, I will install green drone comb to help control varroa mites, but first, let me explain what that is and why it works. Firstly, green drone comb is green so that it's easily identifiable to the beekeeper. Otherwise, the color has no impact on the bees or the mites. Drone comb frames are made with larger cells than regular frames, and this tricks the queen into laying drone eggs. Drone eggs differ from worker eggs in two ways. Firstly, the drone egg is unfertilized, and this is what makes it a drone. Drones are male, while workers are female. Drones are also larger than workers, and take an extra three days to incubate. It's been well established that varroa mites prefer to reproduce in drone cells, and this is likely due to the longer incubation time, which allows the mites to create more offspring than they would have been able to otherwise. Armed with this knowledge, a beekeeper can install a frame of drone cells, which will act as a magnet attracting the mites to those cells. Once the frame is mostly capped over, but before the drones emerge, the green drone comb is removed, and in most cases, frozen, to kill the mites. The process can be repeated, and has been shown to significantly reduce mite levels within a hive. In order to install the green drone comb, I'll simply open up the hive, remove one frame that hasn't been drawn out yet, and replace it with the green drone comb. I make sure to keep this green frame a few frames from the end of the hive, because the queen is less likely to lay eggs near the outside of the hive. We'll check on this frame regularly throughout the season, because we need to make sure that we remove it before the drones emerge, or we'll actually be helping the mites. Green drone comb is only one tool that I'll be using as part of my integrated pest management system. I'm also using a screen bottom board, which has multiple benefits for the bees. Firstly, with respect to pest control, if a mite falls off of a bee and onto the screen bottom board, it has a good chance of falling out of the hive completely, at which point 
it likely won't make it back into the hive. If instead I were using a traditional wood bottom board, the mite would easily find a bee walking nearby and climb onto its back. Additionally, the screen bottom board allows for increased ventilation, which can speed up the honey making process since the bees need to evaporate the nectar to form honey. Over the course of the season, I'll continue to use an assortment of techniques and tools as a part of my integral pest management strategy. And it's safe to say that pest management is simultaneously one of the most challenging and also one of the most important tasks that a beekeeper must perform. If you enjoyed this video or you want to see more like it, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up, or leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.